Okay, uh, so we'll start with the euro dollar. One thing I want to just look at real quick here is uh, any news that we have coming up. Um, so uh, nothing too much left today. We have the uh, New Zealand business confidence uh, report. Um, and then going into tomorrow, uh, we've got a little bit of stuff, uh, home sales reports in the U.S. and unemployment claims. And then uh, we have excuse me bond auction for uh, Europe and uh, current account for the US um, or excuse me for the UK uh, there we go okay and then quickly uh, the US markets closed pretty good today 150 points up in the Dow uh, 15 up in the S&P so pretty nice little run there and then last but not least I just want to mention a couple of the um, uh, of of what kind of the retail traders are are doing in the markets right now uh, because I think it will be uh, pretty important to what we're going to be doing here so uh, so we're gonna have a look at that uh, and I'm just bringing that screen up here in just a moment um, if you guys had to take a wild guess uh, with some of this big movement down uh, we've seen uh, some dollar rallying for sure the uh, uh, since the Fed spoke, um, you know, we're kind of getting to this point of, uh, you know, rates are now a possibility of, of going up, or they will be going up. It's not if, it's just when now. Uh, and so that's that's definitely a part um, that has played in this dollar rally that we've seen lately. Uh, so uh, dollar strength against the euro, dollar strength against the pound, dollar strength uh, playing out a little bit against Australia here, but uh, we've had a little bit of a bump up. We'll talk about that in a moment. Um, and so far, so as of kind of those uh, more recent movements, um, for quite a while now, traders have been long, or excuse me, more short, like 55 to 60 percent short euro dollar, pound dollar, all those pairs uh, over the last several days, like like several days, like two weeks. And just now, now that we've had these runs down, uh, now traders are back to about 55% long positions, uh, euro dollar and pound dollar, and everyone's kind of flipping once again and, and, uh, and, and, and starting to buy the dips. Now, we don't want to be buying these dips, uh, not just because the retail traders are, uh, but because uh, the, the, the trend is looking pretty strong here. We've got some pretty good movement in the works, and so we'll talk about that. Okay, so just want to get all that stuff out of the way. Um, as you can see, we had a very nice little trade this morning. We we took 70 pips on the Aussie dollar. Uh, we had a sell position that we got into uh, right against this daily pivot. It ran just up to the 38% fib and then dropped all the way down to the daily pivot and took us out. Our You, you can see, well, I guess you can't see it now, but our profit target was 92.50. Uh, 92.50 on the Aussie dollar, uh, which was just a hair above this daily pivot point. You can see that the low of this candle, before it reversed and went back up, the low of this candle right here um, is, uh, whoops, there we go, uh, is 92.45. So it went five pips past our profit target, and then uh, and then it reversed all the way. Uh, it's 40. It's it's like 42 pips off of the low now. So. Um, so, so it was really, the entry could have been a tiny bit better. Uh, we got pretty darn close to getting stopped out, but the exit could not have been uh, hardly a pit better than it was. So, so that was a really nice trade, um, and we, we made some good profits on that one this morning. So that was a great little run. So nice little, uh, ni nice little pips on that one. Um, but we've got some really good potential pips coming up on a, a few other pairs here as well. Uh, the euro dollar um, has has stayed in this channel. We talked about this channel yesterday. Now we have a couple of things going on with this euro dollar. Number one, uh, we have a missed daily pivot on Thursday of last week, which is all the way at 33, uh, about 20. That's going to be a little while probably before that gets hit. Uh, we have a missed daily pivot now uh, from current day. Uh, we're going to probably have a missed daily pivot coming up uh, of our, our actually missed daily pivot from yesterday and then our current day coming up here in just a few minutes we'll probably have a missed daily pivot up here in just a little bit so we have a good couple of upside targets uh, not to mention the weekly pivot which I think the re weekly pivot is still a pretty realistic target but it's now about 170 pips away from current market price um, so there's there's definitely some potential retracement that could be happening here uh, but we're not going to assume that that's going to happen. Uh, what we're, what I think our best bet is going to be on this euro dollar, 
is to sell the rallies um, as opposed to trying to buy on these dips. Now we do have a nice little, there's a nice little hammer, a nice little pin bar right here um, that has held so far and we're about 30 pips off that low uh, right now. Let me just remind myself, uh, thanks again Tom for posting the daily pivots. Um, so the euro dollar daily pivot is going to be about 130.27. Uh, that's not super far away. Uh, you know, it puts us about 13 or 14 pips away from current market price. So that's not something uh, that I'll be, you know, watching too closely for a pivot trade. But one thing that you will be able to see is the missed pivot on the euro dollar coming up uh, is basically going to overlap this trend line right here. So. So, um, th th this trend line, which is actually a very nice little channel, is turning into a very good opportunity uh, to once again sell the rallies. Uh, if this breaks out, we could see a nice little run up. Uh, anybody that's feeling, you know, a little bit aggressive uh, kind of a thing, um, I, I, I don't think it's the worst idea to buy the breaks. Uh, I'm just probably not going to do it myself. Uh, this is a pretty nice little trend line. This channel's been holding up pretty nicely. If it does break, I think there's going to be some, uh, you know, probably some pretty good pips. But here's the thing that we have to watch. If we break this trend line right here, we've got a daily pivot point that's going to be right here. And then we've got this really nice little support level, uh, which is now resistance at about 130.55. Uh, it's going to have a lot of stuff that it's going into uh, if it moves up. And that's why I personally don't really want to try to buy this, uh, uh, this breakout up. But I do love uh, opportunities to sell the euro. I mean, if, if for some crazy reason we got as high as 131.50, which, which we will eventually, um, that, that, that'll be a good area to short the euro. Uh, on a shorter term basis, I think that this resistance will also be a good area um, to watch for uh, a bounce and a continuation right back down. Um, yeah, that's that, that's true, Zara, and that is true, and, and that's one thing to remember is we have the end of month fix. Remember the old fix? We got that coming up, and you know, of course, options will be expiring and so on on, on the euro. So there there will be you know some little opportunities to to uh, get some movement there. What, by the way, is the last day of this week? Friday's the twenty eighth. Saturday, twenty ninth. Sunday. So. So possible activity Sunday, but let's definitely keep an eye on things on Friday. We don't have a we we, we don't have typical um, you know sessions on Friday unless it's non-farm payroll. Uh, but I will be peeking in on things on Friday because that's getting right into the end of the month, and that end of month fix is always uh, lots of volatility there. So so we'll be looking at that. Okay, so um, okay, yeah, very good, one twenty nine fifty five. So yeah, some some really good levels we're coming into. So again, a couple of things I'm going to be looking at. Let's watch. Uh, let's watch this guy right here, 130.55, uh, and let, let's let's watch and see if that can hold and see if we can get some opportunities to short off of that resistance, uh, a break above that, and that's going to put us into one uh, 130.150 potentially. So let's keep an eye on that. Uh, on the very shorter term move and and shorter term run, you can see uh, on this 15 minute chart. Uh, if if we don't even get up there, which is a possibility, uh, then we've got a nice little short-term trend line that we can watch and trade the break of. Now, one thing that I would be careful of is if this trend line breaks like in the next, before the end of the hour, the trend line breaks before the end of the hour, it's not something I would take. If it breaks at the start or after uh, the start of the next hour, then, then this could be a very nice little trend line to trade the break of. So it's just a really short term guy right here. Watch that, take that break. Otherwise, let's look for opportunities to short around 130.55 and potentially uh, uh, get up here to above these highs. Now, I'm gonna kinda keep an eye on things. There's a lot of pressure on the Euro. Um, and, and there's lots of dollar momentum here, but I'm going to keep an eye on things. We may be able to reach this missed daily pivot, uh, which is at about 130.97 area. And if we get that and we get some reversal candles, uh, that may also be a nice area to short as well with stops just above the high of the week. So those are kind of the couple of things I'm looking for. Um, so just to kind of run through that one more time, uh, I, I'm interested in potentially selling the break of this short-term trend line as long as it happens after 5 p.m. chat time. Um, 
and the reason I say that is because kind of this four o'clock hour, this first hour of the uh, Asian markets being open, uh, things are always they, they they move quickly and they reverse quickly, uh, and it's usually not the genuine movement that's going to happen. So five o'clock and on, I would trade this break right here. Otherwise, I'm going to look for an opportunity like a reversal candle to trade uh, the bounce off 130.55 uh, if it just pushes right through that and and because we have some important upper levels I'm gonna use reversal candles to get me into these trades so like a shooting star uh, at 130.55 or 130.100 and if we end up getting through both of those you know with some bullish candles and so on then I would just uh, simply place a pending order to uh, to get short at 131.50 but I think that's pretty you know maybe by the end of the week or the start of next week we, we could get as high as 131.50 but I kinda doubt we're gonna see that too soon so we're gonna be a little more focused on trading the break of this trend line or getting a reversal um, at around 130.55 uh, area to, to, to get short. So that's kind of what I'm looking for on the euro dollar. Uh, questions, comments, let me know, let me know. Remember about 55% of uh, retail positions are now long euro dollar. So it should be a good opportunity to continue shorting it lower. Okay, no questions, no comments. That is okay. Let's move on to the pound dollar. Uh, oh yeah, um, 4th of July, next Thursday. Uh, will that affect Sunday? Um, Steve, yeah, good question. I don't know how much that'll affect uh, markets before. That'll just kind of turn into a long weekend for the markets, and so, um, so you know, I, 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 I think we'll still be able to see plenty of movement uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and even into Wednesday. But I think things will definitely slow down Thursday, Friday for the markets for sure. Good question, good question. I know I'm going to slow down. I probably won't do too much trading on Thursday uh, and, and definitely not much on Friday. Um, and Friday would be the first Friday. I'm sure non-farm payroll will be bumped to the next uh, Friday after that. I'll have to double check on that. And if someone has a moment, maybe check your calendar. Uh, we have plenty of days before we get there, but uh, that would be something to, to keep an eye on. Okay. Uh, now, one, one more thing I wanted to mention on the euro dollar. Um, this level right here that we were looking to hold the reversal, this is that 130.55. Uh, and th 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 this is the reason that this is still a very good potential level to short off of. Um, this is the 200 uh, day moving average on the daily chart here that we broke through. It's also the bottom of this major reversal candle that did a very poor job in reversing the market. Um, so th this is now a really, really good resistance level, this 130.55. So I just wanted to make sure everyone knows that and, and really keep an eye on that. Uh, it, you know, that, that would be a really good entry today uh, if we can get into that. So around 130.55 to short. Okay. Um, it is scheduled for July 5th. Interesting. I, I bet that'll be moved. Um, uh, I don't know. I mean, it's it's. it's I'm I'm sure it's on the schedule right now, but we'll we'll keep an eye on it going into next week. That might get moved, uh, since 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 that'll be a holiday weekend, and I I we'll we'll see we'll see, uh, we'll keep an eye on that. But thanks for looking at that for me, Gustavo. Um, okay. Um, pound dollar. We've got some good stuff on the pound dollar here. Uh, the pound dollar is is coming very very nicely off of this top of the channel here on the daily chart. Uh, you can see the pound dollar has a very similar situation as the euro dollar, and that is a major bullish reversal candle. Major bullish reversal candle. Again, major bullish reversal candle. This is a fantastic pin bar on the daily chart that had little to no effect on the pound dollar. It just pushed right through it, no problem. So that is going to be a very, very excellent resistance level. And that one is not so far away. The euro is about 50-ish pips away. And this one uh, is is just a mere, uh, well, let's see, where are we? That's, that's 25 or so pips away. Uh, so that's going to be around 153.45. Uh, that should be a great area uh, to potentially short against as well. Now, um, we have taken out uh, on on the uh, on the euro or on the pound dollar, we have uh, th this guy. I think is is going to count is is gone right there. You know, we came within about a pip or two of this daily pivot. We've already reached the uh, uh, weekly pivot point. Uh, the pound dollar really has nothing stopping it from just heading straight down. So let's look for opportunities. Um, 
uh, again this should be a pretty nice little level it's pretty close so this might have enough to really push uh, uh, the, the, the market might have enough to push through that we'll just keep an eye on that again that's 153.45 um, we'll just update that real quick 53.45 uh, so that's going to be a good level to watch for resistance um, okay all right all right one uh, Ah, uh, yeah, okay, good, Gustavo. Missed weekly pivot, 151.65. Excellent, excellent. So that'll be, you know, just that much more reason for this thing to continue down. Um, okay, yep, yeah. and the 100-day 100, uh, 100 moving average there uh, on the daily chart as well. So so that's where we're going to be looking for some of these opportunities. Uh, we'll, we'll watch this, 153.45. Um, technically this is right in the middle of the channel it's basically perfectly in the middle of the channel about 75 pips from the top and uh, and, and you know 7500 pips from the bottom of the channel it's right in the middle there so we're gonna watch closely a nice little reversal candle would be a great entry off of this 153.45 otherwise we could be headed all the way back up into the top of this channel now euro dollar I think we have a much better chance of breaking out of this channel at least to some small degree because it's really just been riding up the top of that channel pound dollar has just kind of double topped on that channel and now it's a good little distance from it so uh, so so potentially shorting against the high on the pound dollar uh, could be you know could could be a good opportunity um, and you can see that that high is right right around there so we'd be you know maybe 70 70 to 75 pip stop if we got in just right at the top of this channel we're gonna keep an eye on that you can see that there's a nice little uh, nice little support which turned into some nice resistance right around 153.95 area uh, and that that coincides very nicely with this channel so that you know basically about 154.00 could be a uh, a really great area to get short if we do get above 153.45.50 area so so remind, so remember to keep an eye on that again we have some short term levels you know just looking at this 5 and 15 minute chart you can see these guys right here uh, nice little trend line nice little move um, and, and you know if that breaks that could be a quick little easy entry uh, not not one that I would be super excited about I'm, I'm definitely more interested in getting closer to 153.50 and then potentially to 15400 uh, in that area that would be a great uh, great spot to short um, as far as the missed pivots go 15350 is a missed pivot uh, on the pound dollar as well so that's just that much more of a reason uh, to be looking to get short uh, around this uh, around this 15350 area so so we're gonna watch for that but again when we're kind of in the middle of channels and uh, you know, and there, there's not the most significant support or resistance levels. Now, 153.50 is a pretty significant one, uh, but we're in the middle of the channel, so I'm going to be a little bit cautious and look for some reversal candles there as well. But just know that that's going to be uh, a potential spot to start looking for those entries short uh, on the pound dollar. So we'll be watching, waiting, keeping our eyes and ears cautiously open and ready for uh, opportunities anywhere between 153. 50 and 15400 to get short in this pair once again, and I will uh, I will be posting those details um, as we uh, as we go and as market conditions develop and so on. Um, okay, so questions, any questions, comments, uh, and good good comments by the way uh, uh, on the pound dollar, the hundred moving average, and the missed weekly pivot. Uh, definitely good stuff to keep in mind. Absolutely. Uh, Aussie dollar gave us uh, again a very nice move up today and it just technically moved perfectly into number one the 38 percent fib number two it came into all of this resistance right here which is a ton of resistance weekly pivot 200 moving average R2 uh, 38 percent fib I mean there was almost no chance that it could get higher there's always a chance something can you know run through levels but there was as much resistance right in this area as I have seen in a while on a trade um, so, a very nice little move there. Um, I'm still looking for this Aussie dollar uh, and an opportunity to uh, to to sell this once again. Uh, I think shorting against this high will be a good opportunity, and I think we should be watching for that. Um, you know, basically similar. I, I think that we could have a good opportunity. Um, thanks, William. Thank you. Um, I, I think we could have a, a good opportunity to almost take the same trade that we took on the Aussie dollar uh, again just just 
almost to the to the pip. Uh, you know, get in about 20 pips or so from that high. Our entry was 92.20. Uh, you know, get stops above that high. Uh, target that the, the the daily low and the daily pivot. Um, I think could actually play out pretty nicely uh, once again. And I'm going to be watching for that. Uh, of course, if we do break up above the 38% fib, I think we have a nice, easy opportunity for this to run into that 50% fib. Um, very oftentimes, we see uh, when you know when, when we reach the 38% fib, there's very, very good possibilities uh, and high probabilities of reaching that 50% fib. So that'll be something to watch. You know, if we get above about 93.45, 93.50, then uh, pretty good chance that we have 9400 pretty easily in in the sights. So above 9350 just look at buying that thing into 9400 quick 50 pips should be nice and easy uh, but I don't think that we're gonna have a very easy time breaking that high and that's why I think we have a great opportunity to short against that high um, once again just just pretty much like I said the uh, about the same thing we did this morning um, the Aussie dollar missed pivot is 92.85 area so that's Wow, is it really that far up there? Did I read that right? 92, 92.84. Um, so that's a good little distance. Or, no, oh, actually, oh, excuse me, I'm, I'm looking at 93. Never mind. Okay, so so we're basically at the missed uh, uh, pivot point. We're just a couple of pips above it. So um, so, so no no pivot trade on this one. The pivots are all pretty close on everything, uh, except for the euro dollar. It's a few pips away. But I'm just going to be, once again, looking for uh, an opportunity to short the Aussie dollar against this high. And I think we may actually see a nice little break of this uh, ascending trend line. Um, as far as all the other charts go, we still have a very nice... Now, the Aussie dollar of all the pairs has held its low of the last several days fairly well. And this is still a big major reversal candle uh, on the daily chart. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, Euro dollar and pound dollar had those exact same candles, but they were unable to hold those lows. The Aussie dollar has been very able to hold the lows. Uh, and that's why I'm just mentioning that I think we have uh, uh, a good little opportunity to, you know, possibly buy the break of that high and trade from the 38 to the 50, uh, because that low is holding fairly well. Uh, <laughs> it's a sad looking Aussie. Well, you know, currencies go up and they go down. That's just part of the game. Um, but let, let, let's keep our eye on this little kind of reversal pattern, this base that's forming here. We just kind of have to keep an eye on that because that is still a threat of more bullish movement. Although fundamentally, it's hard to imagine uh, the Aussie dollar or any other pair right now uh, continuing any higher than, uh, than they currently are. We have a very nice reversal candle here on the four-hour chart on the Aussie dollar. Uh, that's a great little shooting star and, and, again, a good reason to be getting short against that. Uh, nice hammer though to follow it right up uh, right after that so you know definitely some some threats of either direction but uh, yeah so that's pretty much all I have to say uh, short against that high within 20 or 25 pips of it um, if we break let's reverse and, and buy it up to uh, 9400 otherwise let's look to short against that high and target uh, the daily lows here uh, once again and you know as we've already done today and I think we'll have another opportunity at doing that again this afternoon and evening okay questions comments on that question oh let's see will gold go down more and take the Aussie with it um, yeah possibly that's that's a definite possibility we actually will have a, a quick look at gold Steve because there's uh, some pretty important levels on gold that we need to uh, uh, at least keep our eye on so yeah yeah we'll have a look at gold um, okay, so quick look at some of the yen pairs. Uh, Euro yen had a, a little kind of quick break out of this channel, and it's just right back in it. And the Euro yen is is bouncing around this channel. I still don't think it's super tradable. Uh, I mean, it is, but it isn't. Um, it you know there there there's some good opportunities to trade the reversals off of you know off the trend channel that uh, you know it's it's holding in there pretty well. It's just not my favorite looking setup uh, right now. It's it's a lot of chop. It is staying in the channel fairly well, but it's just it's just not looking good enough for me to really want to uh, uh, jump into anything there just yet. So so you know keep that in mind. If if there's something you're looking at, if there's something in specific you want to talk about on the euro yen, 
I'll try to dig deep, but but right now it just looks a little bit on the choppy side, uh, and I'm I'm more interested in it once it gets down to kind of these daily lows, this big daily support right here that's super important. It's still a little over 200 pips away, and we'll you know we'll be keeping an eye on it, but I just don't think that there's something super fantastic to be trading just yet. But watch these channel uh, extremes, and you know, and we'll see where it goes. We'll see how it plays out, but but nothing really. Uh, too super interesting beyond that. Uh, one thing to just mention quickly is uh, the run up. So th this move from the low to the high on the weekly chart, uh, we are still uh, unable to get below that 23% fib. Um, the euro yen could be forming a very nice uh, inverted or just a, excuse me regular head and shoulders pattern here. Um, so that that'll be something to watch, um, you know, over the next several weeks and kind of see how that pans out. I think, you know, I, I think the yen pairs will probably continue. You know, the yen will probably continue to weaken, but technically speaking, we're starting to see some some signs that we could see a continuation towards yen strength, and that doesn't fundamentally play out uh, super well. But it's it's something we have to be aware of and keep our eyes on. Uh, but it, that's that's a little ways out yet. Uh, pound yen uh, again getting a little bit on the choppy side as well. It was holding this support level very nicely, which was around 149.70 ish, and then it broke out of that a little bit uh, earlier today, and it's right back up in that general area. Um, not, I'm not doing anything on the pound yen yet either. Uh, just kind of watching this this messiness uh, play out, and uh, you know, same thing. I'm watching this daily low, which is a uh, fairly significant support level. We'll see how that one plays out. And in the meantime, the rest of it, you know, I'll, I'll keep an eye on things. And and you can see that, you know, we, we've got some channels uh, uh, in the works here, but it's it's still a mess right now. So nothing on Euro, Yen, or Pound, Yen for me personally. Now, one thing to just mention really quick here is the Aussie Yen is actually starting to get a little bit interesting. Now, it looks pretty it looks horrific actually on the uh, on the one hour chart this is still just a choppy choppy mess but if we go a little bit beyond the one hour chart we start getting into the four hour chart and we can see a very nice resistance level uh, just around 91.15 ish right in that area 91.15 and we can see an ascending trend line as well which gives us an opportunity to potentially trade the break uh, uh, against this high um, which you know we have some pretty nice uh, uh, some pretty nice reversal candles here telling us that these levels might hold. It's a nice little uh, pin bar right here uh, confirming that that kind of 91.15 and even as high as uh, uh, about 20 or so uh, area. So getting up against that, we may see some opportunities to short against that and look for a break of this trend line. I think that's a very real possibility, uh, especially the fact that it's staying in this channel. It's bouncing around in this channel very nicely. Uh, and so if it stays below this high, uh, it doesn't break immediately. We've got a great reversal candle uh, trading on our side, and we could uh, see a very nice break of that trend line. Uh, if you look at it on the daily chart, it's been pretty pretty stuck in this area uh, of about uh, 230 pips or so uh, for a couple of weeks now, um, and it's hanging in there very nicely. If it breaks above that 91, 15, 20 area, we could see uh, a much larger movement and retracement in the works. Um, on the move down here, the Aussie Yen has, uh, from, from the low to high, uh, has run down and started to consolidate at the 50% FIB. Uh, and you can see on this weekly chart, this, this, this current candle right here is probably going to end a uh, very nice pin bar, at least, you know, at least a, a, a bearish hammer there, but, uh, or bullish hammer, but, uh, um, you know, that, that, that's going to be one to keep an eye on. Um, and... If we go to the daily chart here and we draw some fibs from this high uh, to this low, we can start to see that uh, uh, we've got quite a ways to go before we're even getting to the. Is that coming right? Okay, yeah. Before even getting to the 23% fib, um, but you know we, we we could start to see some retracement uh, happening on this uh, uh, daily chart at some point. So for the meantime, I'm just going to be watching this 91. Th um, 13-ish area, uh, 91.15, watching this ascending trend line, seeing if we can get some breaks and, and see if this will trade back down to the low of the channel uh, and bounce around there. So the Aussie Yen's getting a little more interesting. Euro Yen and Pound Yen are still pretty messy. Um, and then once again, just to sum everything up real quick here, uh, mostly interested in shorting the Euro Dollar around 130.50. Uh, if we don't get up that high, then we will uh, look for a, a break of this little short-term trend line. 
uh, pound dollar, uh, looking for this to get up into 153.50 and potentially as high as 154.00 for opportunities to short. Uh, pound or uh, Aussie dollar, uh, looking to get within 20 or 25 pips of this high, shorting against the high if it breaks and we get stopped out, reversing our position and taking that into the 50% fib uh, for a nice 50 pip run. So those are kind of the ones that I think are going to be the best moves today. Euro dollar, pound dollar, and Aussie dollar still have the the better, cleaner setups. It's it's all about dollar movement right now, and the yen pairs are kind of uh, kind of consolidating, kind of getting messy, but they'll they'll line up again and they'll give us some good opportunities. But I think we have some really good moves in the works and uh, some really good stuff to play out for the rest of the week. So that's what I'm looking for. Does anybody have any questions, comments, anything I left out? Any questions, comments?